So here we are inside of Premiere Pro. We're in a regular project and we're ready to import some media files. Now, just for the record, when you import anything to Premiere Pro, you're not actually copying the media files anywhere. Premiere Pro leaves the files where they are on the hard drive and just makes a link to them inside your project file. Essentially, there are two ways for you to import, aside from capturing from tape. One is to just double click here on the project panel or right click and choose import or go to the file menu and choose import. They're all exactly the same thing and browse to any kinds of files that are whole files, whole media files. And let's have a go at that first of all. I'm going to double click here and in my footage drive in my media folder, I've got video assets. And inside my video assets folder, I've got various kinds of media. I'm going to uh, browse into this Dan Whitehouse folder. We've got some lovely media here uh, that's part of a music video I made for Dan Whitehouse. Let me just select these clips. I'm just lassoing them and I'm going to click open. And there they are, they're imported into my project. I can now double click on these and see the media. And uh, there he is, the man himself. It's very kind of Dan to let us use some of the media for this course. If you get a chance, take a look at his website, danwhitehouse.com. He's got some um, fantastic new albums out. And also I can double click and I'll go up a level here. And this time I've got some more media in this double identity folder. I'm just going to go back up a level. By the by, because I'm on Windows, I'm getting Windows Explorer style browsing dialogues here. If you're working on Mac OS, you'll get Finder style dialogues. It'll be just as you expect. Here I'm going to select this folder and rather than going into it and clicking open, or if I click open it's just going to take me into the folder, rather than doing that I'm going to click on import folder and this is going to take the entire contents of the folder and it's going to create a container inside of Premiere Pro with the media files in it. There we go, double identity named after the folder. Now you need to be aware that the link between the name of this folder and the contents of it, the names of these items, isn't dynamic. If I make changes in Premiere Pro, it's not going to update the hard drive. This is just a convenient shortcut to recreate the structure of the folders on the hard drive inside my project. I'm going to double click again and uh, go up a level again. And I've got some nice media here from Nonpop Productions. They very kindly donated some media as well. And notice on the bottom right hand corner here, I've got the option to filter the kind of media that I'm going to see based on all of the supported file types in Premiere Pro. So if I set this, for example, to show me AVI movies, I'm not going to see anything here because these are all QuickTime movies. If you did have mixed media, then you'd find it a much easier way of locating your content. Again, I'm going to go up a level. I'm going to choose Meadow, which is the name of that film, and choose Import Folder. In fact, while I'm importing things, the other way of doing exactly the same way of importing is to just drag and drop. Here's a little uh, screener from Nonpop. This is a Photoshop document I'm dragging straight into Premiere Pro. And as you'd imagine for a piece of software made by the company who make Photoshop, the support for PSDs is absolutely brilliant. I can import everything as footage, as all the layers from the Photoshop document combined, or I can import as a sequence and get individual items, or just choose individual layers from the original Photoshop document. If I bring this in as media and click OK, you can see again, I can double click and open it up, and there they are, nonpop.co.uk. Do check them out, they're absolutely brilliant. Now this process of importing media files by double clicking or dragging and dropping, in fact let's remove that PSD because I won't include that with the other assets, that process is functional because the media files I'm bringing in are video and audio combined into a single file. It's also possible to get media files that vary, and that are split up. You can have files from P2 cameras, for example, or XD cam cameras, where the video and audio are all separated out into separate directories. And that can be quite difficult to import. If I show you on my machine here, now here's the contents of a P2 card. This is what you get. And inside here, you've got all these different folders with different kinds of content. Here's some video clips. Up here, I've got some audio clips. It's a bit of a problem because it's difficult to know which part you should import to Premiere Pro. Well, this is where the media browser comes in. The media browser shows you formats just like P2 as if they were regular clips. And I'm gonna browse here. Here's my footage drive. Here's my media. And let's browse inside that. 
there's my video assets. And here's that same P2 card, but this time around, I'm getting really nice thumbnails that I can browse and select, and I can double click to open them up. There's another copy of that shot there. Oh no, that's a wide shot. And if I decide I want to have them in my project, I can lasso to select them if I want, right click and choose import. Or if I've got the two panels visible separately, I can just drag and drop from the media browser into my project panel. Here I'm in the project panel and there are the clips and they're now imported. And I can now treat them as if they were whole clips combined. I don't need to treat them as separate items. This media browser is also useful for looking at things like RED media. RED is a camera raw format and Premiere Pro has class leading support for RED files. So if you're shooting with an Epic or a Scarlet or a RED one, you're gonna love working with Premiere Pro. I'm just going to pull the media browser out here and drop it into the timeline panel so I can see it side by side with my project, just to show you how easy it is to drag and drop from one panel into the other. Does the same thing as right clicking and choosing import. Let's put this back again. And I think there's a little bit more media I can bring in here. I'm just going to double click on the background. And uh, yeah, here we go. I've got this shot that's good for stabilizing. I'll use that. And I've also got this mountain race media. Let's have that whole folder. And I think that's pretty much everything for this project. So you see how quick and easy it is to import things. And the reason it's so fast is precisely because Premiere Pro is not actually importing or copying any files. It's just really making shortcuts to the items I've pointed it at. Here, for example, if I select this red clip, I can right click and I can choose Reveal in Explorer. This would be Reveal in Finder on Mac OS. This is gonna bring up an Explorer window or a Finder window with the actual media file. Here it is. And the thing that catches people out is that if you look at the shortcut that's created inside of Premiere Pro, it'll never say, I am a shortcut that points to a file. What it says is, I am a file. It pretends to be the thing it points to. If I scroll along here, you can see all the headings, all the information I've got about this red clip, the duration, the in and out marks from the tape, the, uh, well, it's file-based, of course, the size of the file, the pixel aspect ratio, all that stuff. It never says I'm a shortcut. It pretends to be the thing it points to, but it's important to be clear that they're distinct. So that's importing media files to Adobe Premiere Pro CS6.